This is Simplifying Radicals Part 2. In the previous video, we only had a square root like this to simplify. We did not have a coefficient. The coefficient out front does not change anything. I just point out a coefficient problem just to tell you to be careful. A lot of times students just work on the radical and forget to go back to get the coefficient. So my suggestion is, as soon as you see you have a coefficient, then you want to bring that coefficient down Put parentheses there to remind you that whatever happens with this square root of 18, you're going to multiply three times that answer. That's the whole deal on having a coefficient there, just remembering to deal with it. So we're going to have to do a factor tree on 18. So 18 breaks into 6 times 3. 3 is prime. We circle it. 6 is not prime, so we have to break it again. And we're going to get 2 times 3 times 3 for 18. So here's our 3 that we brought down to begin with. 18 breaks into 2 times 3 times 3. So there's that coefficient 3 in the front. Bring it right on down. We have a pair of 3's. So for that pair of 3's, another 3 is going to come outside of the radical sign, which gives us, there's our 3 on the outside. Here's our pair of 3's. So another 3 is coming out with a radical 2. And then just 3 times 3 gives us 9 times the square root of 2. So the coefficient in front doesn't really make it any harder. You just have to remember to drag it along as you work with your square root. Let's do another one. Negative 8 times the square root of 24. 24, we're going to have to do the factor tree. It goes to 4 times 6, neither of which are prime. So keep on factoring. It gives us 2 times 2 for 4, 2 times 3 for 6. Here's our negative 8 that we're going to bring right on down. It's right there. There's our factorization of the 24, a pair of 2s. So a 2 is going to get to come outside here. There's our negative 8. A pair of 2s brings us this 2. We have 2 times 3 left over, which gives us a 6 inside the square root. And all that's left is to multiply those two coefficients and get negative 16 times radical 6. Now, sometimes we have variables inside the square root. So we can deal with them the same way we dealt with before. Write it out. x squared means x times x. There's a pair of x's, so for that pair of x's, an x gets to come out. So it makes it look like the square root of x squared equals x. That's not the entire story. The actual story is that the square root of x squared equals the absolute value of x. The reason we need the absolute value bars is that the square root sign means we're looking for the principal square root, which is a positive value. If you just said the square root of x squared equals x, you're saying that whatever this x is comes right over here. Well, what if x had been negative? Since we don't know if x is positive or negative, then we have to say we have the absolute value. But don't panic. To avoid that, we're going to assume that we have all positive variables. So we're not going to have to think about the bars. You might have seen that in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 in high school. But the very next section there always says we're going to avoid those bars by assuming the variables are positive. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to assume the variables are positive. Therefore, we can use this definition of square root, which makes it easier for us. So we just have to take this variable by variable. The square root of x squared and then the y to the fourth. Write it all out. There's a pair of x's. There's a pair of y's and another pair of y's. So for this, we're going to get an x out. For this, we're going to get a y come out and another y to come out, which when we multiply that up, we get x times y squared. Now, you might have noticed that when we have even powers here, there's a very easy way to get these numbers. x squared, there's a pair of x's. Divide this 2 by 2 gives us x to the first. Divide this 4 by 2 gives us 2. Now, why am I dividing by 2? because we're pairing things up. It takes two to make a pair. That's going to be our easy rule. All we have to do is divide the exponent by two. That's going to be the number that becomes the exponent on the outside. So to deal with square roots of variables, all we have to do is divide these exponents by two. So x to the sixth, y to the tenth, z to the eighth, divide that six by two gives us x to the third. Divide the 10 by 2 gives us y to the 5th. Divide the 8 by 2 gives us z to the 4th. If you have a coefficient, well, then you have to deal with that coefficient. 
In this case, the coefficient is a perfect square. I know the square root of 16 is 4, so I can bring that out immediately and then deal with your variables. Divide 2 into 2 gives us x to the first. If you want to write that first, you can. Otherwise, you don't need to. Divide 10 by 2 gives us y to the fifth. Sometimes the coefficient is not a perfect square, and we have to use our factor tree. So the tree on 12 looks like this, 3 times 2 times 2. So that means I have a pair of 2's, so a 2 is going to get to come out, and a 3 is going to stay in. But instead of writing the radical 3 right next to the 2, I'm going to spread it out a bit because I know I'm going to have to deal with the variables. So now deal with your variables. 2 goes into 2 one time, so that's an x coming out, or x to the first if you want. 2 goes into 6 three times with a y to the third there. Well, what happens if the exponent is odd? Can we still use our, our rule of dividing by 2? Absolutely, but let's see why we're going to be able to do that. x cubed is the same as x times x times x. Let's look for our pairs. And the pair of x is right there, so an x is going to come out. But I have this leftover x. So I have x times the square root of x. Why am I getting this leftover when I didn't get the leftover before? Well, because this number's odd. That's the nature of an odd number. So when you have an odd exponent, you can still divide by 2. But you're going to have a remainder of 1 when you complete your division, and that's going to be the power on the variable inside the radical. So look at this x to the fifth and the y to the third. We're going to have to do plain old-fashioned arithmetic, divide 2 into 5, divide 2 into 3. 2 goes into 5 2 times evenly with a remainder of 1. 2 goes into 3 1 time evenly with a remainder of 1. The number up here with the division becomes your outside power, and the remainder is your inside power. So, since 2 went into 5 twice, this is this 2 right here, but we have a leftover x. 2 goes into 3 once, that's this power right here, with a remainder of 1. Then cleaning it up a little bit, we have x squared y times the square root of xy. When you are dealing with square roots with odd powers, the remainder power will always be 1. I point out the remainder here because when we move into cube roots or other roots in another video, we're going to have a different remainder. But for right now, with square roots, it's just a matter of having a power of 1 on each of those variables that are left over. So x to the fifth, y to the ninth, z squared. Take it variable by variable and divide by 2. 2 goes into 5 two times evenly with one left over. You know, and you can actually do 2 into 5 this way. If it helps any, you can write 5 over 2 this way and think about the mixed number 2 and 1 half. So here's the 2 that went there. There's the 1 that represents that one right there. So whatever works for you division-wise. 2 goes into 9 four times with one left over. And 2 goes into 2 one time. That was an even number, so we don't have any leftover z's. And there's your simplified answer. All right, let's put a coefficient in front of all these odd powers. The coefficient needs to be dealt with separately. Square root of 32, we're going to have to do a factor tree on that. There's your tree on 32. Breaks into all of these 2's. We have a pair of 2's, another pair of 2's. So for each of these, 1's going to come out. That's going to give us a 4 on the outside and a 2 on the inside. Notice I've left some space there, so we've got room to put our variables in. So start your division. 2 goes into 3 one time evenly with 1 left over. Notice I'm saying it goes in there one time evenly, but it is x to the first. Don't just put a 1 out here. You need the variable. 2 goes into 11 five times, which gives me y to the fifth with 1 left over. And 2 goes into 15 seven times with 1 left over. And that's your simplified version of this expression right here. More to come in another video.